Hi everyone. As you can see, <coughs> I'm on the well I'm heading down to the river Dune and I've got my micro spare or small salmon rod for this one here, the wee double hander, which is a basically a 78 uh, micro spare and I've got my trout rod, my nine foot four weight. Uh, you can see it's well it's raining. <laughs> Just a drizzle. It's that type of drizzle that you get really wet with. As you say, it just it's in the air and uh, so you may see me cleaning the camera a lot, like just now. I've only just I've started. I'm not sure how the footage is going to look like, but I'll try and clean it as much as I can. And uh, we'll see how we go. I'm going to obviously fish. I'm going to spend an hour for a salmon or so, and then maybe an hour or two. Well, the trout depends. I don't know the water like. Uh, we've had rain, we've had a wee drop of water. I've heard that one or two salmon been seen further up. But I've not uh, heard of any fish caught. So, as you can see, it may get a wee bit wet. But anyway, just out for two or three hours. And we'll see how we get on. Well, there we are folks, the river's, there's nothing in it. As I say, we had a wee drop of rain, we had to be, it wasn't much water. Uh, water's gin clear, you can see. This is why I brought my trout rod with me. Because, um, I mean the chances are with any salmon, you can get any grouse to be lying in, in the faster water, like. But they, they mainly lie further down the corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up both roads and uh, we'll just walk our way down see how we got on. So hopefully we'll, we'll end up by a good day whether we catch fish or not. Set up both roads. Uh, obviously trout rod I've got. I've actually set up with a, a dry and a nymph and uh, just basically piggyback off the dry. I have seen a couple of wee fish rise, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish it through with a tube, small copper tube, half inch in this case. Uh, I've not seen obviously any salmon in the water's summer level. So even though we've had a lot of rain, uh, there's, how can I put it? There's nothing in the river. The trees of and the the ground is soaked up most of the water. But we'll go through this this run here down just slightly by that stone there. And then I'm gonna be fishing in the main pool round the bend for with the salmon fly as well. But there, I've got as I say I've got a red devil on which is a copper tube, half inch which is equivalent to a size 10. A size 10 fly. So, but it, but it's, I want it down. Basically, what'll happen is it'll, if any fish are there, it's, they'll be thinking about, you know, just resting. It may upset them. But they either take it, and if they don't, then some, what I normally do is change to a normal fly a wee bit higher. 
And the Red Devil's a great fly for doing that. It's, it's a great, it's, it's a very simple dressing, it's just a red bucktail and jungle cock. We are, in this case it's a fire orange head. And uh, we'll soon see. I mean, it's quite simple, if it's no sign of any fish at all. And if you're going through the pool, suddenly a fish start moving, it's, the chances are it's you're the reason why they're doing that. We'll go quickly go through it and we'll see what happens. Now, I'm, I'm fishing my. People ask me always about the rod, the reel, everything I've got. This is a micro spay, it's a Cadence micro spay, 11 foot. This is the 7 8. It's a lovely rod. So easy to use. It's got the 7 8 micro spay line to go with it. And it. I mean, I'm not casting far anyway, like, but. It's, it's a lovely line to fish with. And once you've got a line length that you're happy with, it's basically very easy. I'm just fishing straight through Segar, I think it's, I can't remember, it's 12 pound. If I remember right. And we've got a barbless treble on. It's very easy to remove. I'm fishing straight off the reel, as you can see. Just allow the tension set so if a fish takes it can turn on the fly. If you want you can actually hold a wee belly a line. The leader length is just slightly longer than the rod. I don't like it too short. The heavier the fly, the shorter the leader. That's basically what you should do. It makes it easier to cast. But the wee half inch copper is, is okay. It does get down and just let it swing out. You can pull, you can bounce the rod, you can do lots of stuff to try and encourage. And I will do that if I'm, especially in the, the slacker water below, I'll certainly work the fly. But in here there's plenty of movement, so plenty of a good run coming through there. And we'll soon know if there's a salmon around if they're interested anyway. It'd be good fun to get one on the camera. And a, a nice fish in the teens in the corner. Uh, first time I fished the water actually. Great fun. You see, I'm not going to spend too much time. It's still early in the season. There's every chance of a grouse. If grouse is a fish, it's a salmon that's running for its first season and it's normally a, a size of between four and six. It used to be big, bigger than that. When I first started you could get grouse were between six and eight. Uh, and an odd one under and an odd one I would think above but they have slightly got smaller but there's not as many. There's it's you never know. We always hope that it'll be a good season. Last year wasn't a good season, so. As you can see, I'm just quickly working my way through. Just allowing the, the fly to swing out. You see it is worthwhile worth stripping the fly as well as adding a wee bit more movement but if you just allow it this is a perfect run just to allow the fly to swing out. These lines nowadays, so easy to cast. The rods are so light as well. Uh, they seem to get better every year for so. I mean, it's just, you will always get a favourite that you don't want to have. 
can old ride that I've always had for many, many years. I've got ten foot hardy that I've had for God knows how many years. But it really needs a bit of refurbishing. But anyway. Water's really low. I mean, it's the dune doesn't drop below this level, but this is as probably as low as it gets. Oh, I missed one there. Give it a second. That was a fish. Jesus. Hold a second. I pulled that fish, that fly away from that fish. And I just caught it and no more, but give it a second just to rest. That was an actual salmon there. God, I'll try them again. Sometimes they will come back. I, just, I was just about to say, just before the rock and after the rock's worth a good cast. I'll see if it comes back. Just as I started to lift off there, that fish took. Oh dear, it's cramped sometimes. May have to come. I'll remember that. I mean, it's, if you do draw a fish, I mean, I actually felt that fish a wee bit. Hopefully it's maybe got a short memory. We'll always give it another go. Just back up a wee bit, I'll just, just see if that fish will come back. You don't get many chances, so... To actually miss one. Anyway, we'll keep we'll keep working my way down. That was my fault, so it was that was basically if I just left it for a split second more the fish were uh, turned in the fly what I did was I pulled the fly away from the fish as it took and then just nicked it and no more and uh, I mean I seen the swirl below the water and the disturbance obviously in the top a wee bit so I may have dropped back, we'll see, we'll fish down below the stone Many a time I've 
I've had the, the same sort of things happen and just gave the fish some time to forget and then come back and then hooked them up. Kind of go too close to that stone, it's Squirrel just jumped in the water there to cross him. <laughs> Don't know if you can see it. it <laughs> just leaped into the river there. Hard to tell now whether it's a squirrel or a weasel. Can it look like a squirrel? Or maybe not. That's a squirrel. Definitely a squirrel. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to reel in here and then come back in, uh, take my trout, bring my trout rod with me. Problem with having a couple of rods here. We've got to go back and pick it up. Right, what we'll do, we'll reel in. And then we'll fish, we're going to be fishing the pool below. So, basically going to fish the top of the pool here. And uh, this is where I expect to hook up, if there's a fisher interested. Unfortunately we missed the one above. Um, I still still annoying. <laughs> uh, the fish is still, still there, we just hopefully I'll come back. But this is the main run around here, this is it's a good area. Got, once I get a length of line that I'm happy with and then I'll just work my way through. I'm just going to end the line slow up a wee bit so that it's hanging there. Mending just slows the fly up. There's sometimes, I mean, I'll show you just basically casting across, allow the fly to settle and then let it swing out and on without doing anything. It means you're fishing the, all the, the whole width of the river, all the way across. When you mend, then you sort of basically, I'd like to do that when I want to, when I know there's a fish line sometimes. If it doesn't take, I'll mend and I'll hang the fly really right in that area and really annoy it. And then fish it normally, I'll try all methods. It's just to slow it up and give it more time to see it and sometimes they like that. You really got to try all methods as well as pulling obviously. And we'll, we'll see. Usually the pool directs me how I fish. <laughs> uh, if slackens off, I start pulling, obviously, I start to work the fly. Just basically to compensate for not having a nice run, you, know, you start doing that. Just go watch that. There's a branch just below the surface on the other side there. Um, don't want to hook it. I'll get my fly behind it once we, we get a nice look. The length I'm fishing is about okay. I mean, it's not far. I mean, this is the heads out by a couple of yards or so. As the river down is not a big river. There it is. It's a small water. I mean, a, a single handed rod 
or a light spay like this one, a micro spay is perfect. Uh, I mean, I can cast this rod. Oh. I could cast it, I've got to work out that shovel. Uh, I can cast it single handed if I wish. It's a basically a, like a 10 foot rod with a double handed handle. Just allows you to, the, hand, the bottom handle allows you to power up using your underhand as they call it. It just allows you to, much like you would double haul, this allows you to double haul the double handed rod. Just to speed the tip up. Castle. Must have tapped the bottom there. Or a stone, sorry. Slipped out my hand. It's going to lengthen my let cast a wee bit. Well, once I get below these stones. I have to be honest with you, it's more a well, it's a more a, a trout day. I'm saying that there's nothing rising or it's uh, really quiet. There is the odd done I see flying kind of hatching. Small but nothing not a lot. The dune does that though a lot of rivers do that. Go quite quiet this time of the year. Uh, The last time I was here, this is where I saw the salmon in the pool. And it was down, just down here. There's a good lie in this area, it's down towards the bench. I don't know if you can see the bench, but down to there. The thing that'll do is, yeah, we'll just work our way back up. We'll just basically back, we'll back up in this area. Uh, backing up is a good way of method of fishing as well. It's basically if you cast across, just allow your fly to settle, and then as you strip, you step backwards, you walk back. As long as you can safely do that. Just stops the pause when you're pulling. Many a fish I've had this way, over, uh, especially the slack water like this, can be very productive. Um, 
There was the water I used to fish at the bottom of the river doing. One of the best pools in the beach. It was just basically like this. And the way to catch the fish was to back up at times. So you get in at the bottom and then back up the pool of the pool. And it was a great way of catching the fish. So we're going to give that, we're going to fish through the pool or back up to where we started and then we fish the dry fly and the nymph. And then we'll see, I'll always I'll try this, if I, so hopefully we'll see a salmon. Obviously if you're doing this, you make sure there's no deer fishing behind you. Because uh, then you'll be walking into their water. So the normal would be to fish down the pool, step a cast. Well, that'll do it. Now, I've got my trout rod, just to give you an idea what I'm going to be fishing. So basically I've got a small, a small nymph, it's a nymph, it's a suggestive type pattern, this there just is tied with wool, believe it or not. And then, this is a fly I tied last week, using possum. I'm just using it as a sighter as well as obviously hoping to catch a fish or so. I mean, there is the odd caddis around, so I give the impression of that as much as a large dun, but just, there's nothing, nothing rising. I've got a tapered leader down to three pound nylon, and then the nymphs tied was a three pound nylon off the bend of the dry. So I'm just going to work up the run here, fish against the wall, and up into the run where we fished earlier. And uh, as I say, use the, the, the dry as a sighter as well as a host to catch fish as well. Just as I say, this is a good area. There is one or two duns. If I see fish... Oh, was that a fish? Gosh, I missed one. I think I missed a the fish there. Too blethering, blethering again. Ah, oh, dear dear. Anyway. Let's see if we can get another one. That may come back because it was just a light touch. I mean, you don't have much water here, you've only got a pair of dry and a nymph in. The nymph's about three foot off the back of that dry. It's got a wee touch of weight, not, not much. Getting your fly to sit for a second is all you need. It's enough to for a fish to take a fly. Very productive area this. I mean a lot of the bits are like against the wall, all the way up here. And uh, I've had lots of fish over the, the months on it. It's the back of this stone is always a a good area. I 
The dry sitting really high, that possum's really showing up. Did you see that? <laughs> a fish. What a fracta go there, as they say. That trout came out of nowhere, that was a that was a nice trout, it took the dry and it completely missed it. So I hope I haven't spooked it altogether. Um, it really came up onto that dry as quick as it hit the water. That's why I got so much of a fright. I'm actually thinking to my, my nymph doesn't seem to be going too deep. Um, I may put on a wee bit a hair's ear of some sort. Some a wee bit a wee bit more weight on it, pheasant tail. We'll see, I'll just give this a wee cast. I mean I've had a take on the nymph, but Jeez, that was a good, a good rise that fish that was. Right behind that stone there. And off the back of the stone anyway. Yeah, I think I'll change to the slightly heavier fly. It's just to slow up a wee touch more. It's coming through quite quick, so we'll see what happens. This this is a latex caddis pupa. Now I have seen a there is one or two caddis around. But I know there's lead in this, a wee bit more weight in it, so I'm going to use that. Same dry fly. It just goes down a wee bit quicker, maybe slow up a bit better. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, straight away it's, it's actually a wee bit touch, a wee bit better. It's acting more like a drogue and holding the... the stopped it ripping through too quick. Uh, you can slow it up as I say. Let's try over there. Let my fly right in towards the wall there. Very quiet today. Uh, probably worthwhile even ca a cast of wets just to see if I can pick up a fish on the wet flies, small wets. But usually things are. I mean, we like fishing dries, but there is a point where you you have to use common sense to look. A more chance with a wet fly. Plus it will cover all different, cover all the water a wee bit better, different depths, we're having a couple of flies on. But we'll persevere with this just now. We'll work up, there's a yellow may coming off in front of us here. It's probably why the fish took, come up to the, the larger fly I've got on. Conditions are perfect, really. If they were flying the river, the fish would be up. But First fish. That's obviously took the wee caddis fly. It's a lovely wee trout. Whew. Give us a drooking. 
slightly lift them and hook it. There you go, lovely brown trout. Okay, first fish. So, let's hopefully get one or two more. Right in the middle of the run. Obviously, took the Cadis pupa. We'll just work our way up. Fish along the very edge, it's always a good area for this side of the, the run as well. I mean, cover it all, I mean, far side as well. The back of the stone, it's a good area. There's one thing the possum really sits up, you can see it straight away. I think it's perfect for it as well, I can, it's sitting really high. You see, it's, it's worthwhile coming through with a couple of wets, I might do that when I get to the top. Just change. Just put one, maybe 10 foot cast or so and uh, drop a couple of weights. Hey everyone, now just I've got a woodcock and here's here on the point, it's just a nice suggestive pattern and I've got a caddis pupa on the, on the dropper. Uh, so they're about five foot apart, no, nothing fancy, five pound nylon. And I'm just gonna just work my way down the stream, around the run and uh, fish. You've seen me fishing weights before, just to allow them to drift with the, the flow and I usually like to bring the tip of the rod towards the bank. So I basically cast across and then you can let them swing round. But I like to keep in contact with the, with the flies like this. I hook up better. It's far easier to... I mean, cast upstream but... Uh, it's quite fast here and to see, I mean you have to fish really short. So if you're fishing upstream you just cast up, just let it drift. And watch the tip of the line or anything, or look for movement, flash, anything, swirl. Just to see, and you fish really short, which is good, a good method. Just looking for the line to stop or pull. If you see the tape before you feel it, you have more chance of catching. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's a good method. As I say, well, we'll fish to dry and the nymph on the way up. We've had one fish, we've we'll missed a couple, and uh, we'll see what the weights does. Stones lying over there, I like that area. I 
My knees wee brown trout love chasing a fly, so don't be shy about actually letting it pull out quite quick, because they, they will chase it. They'll even hit it. If they miss it the first time, they'll have another go. So that's what it's like. Done there. Conditions are absolutely perfect. Like, if you were looking for a good overcast day, this is perfect. Uh, you need the fly life though. You want the fish to come on, you need to be able to. Fly life to bring them up or get them feeding, get them active. This way you're fishing, you're trying to. I mean, fish are always looking for opportunists, they're always wanting to feed. I mean, anything in the wild is going to do that, but obviously, the, if there's a hatch, it just brings them on. There we go. Oh, that's a good trout as well. This one's two in the caddis. Oh, he's a good fish. He's wanting to sit out there. Gosh. I just let him tire himself out. Well, it's paid off anyway, the way it's. Oh, it's a nice brown trout. There's a good pool right in that fast water. There's a way you give in. Oh. It's starting to come up now. Good hard fighting brown trout these, especially this time of year. Oh, kneel down so he doesn't. So that's a good fish. There we are. It's a lovely brown trout. It's a good pound this one. Oh, I'll just move my jacket out of the way. Oh, he's away. There we go. Brilliant. I hope you saw that because my jacket came over at the minute, at the last minute. But um, try and hold this jacket back. So anyway, there we are. That was good. Go back out. I mean, all I'm doing here is watching the tip of the line and then as it comes round here I'm just bringing the rod tip towards the bank keeping the line 90 degrees to the tip of the rod uh, and that's really all I'm doing covering the water as best I can when I mean, there is I'll slow up a wee bit by dropping the rod if I feel it's coming round too quick just to pause it a wee bit Casting upstream, watching for a rise as well. But the main thing I watch is the tip of the line. I'm looking for that wee touch. I'm drawing away so I can tighten up. So say if I feel the, if I see the take, there's more chance of landing the fish if you do. Feeling the take, you're 50-50. Because it's half turned by then. I'm thinking about spitting it out anyway. It's 
slowly work my way down the pool, covering the water as best you can. And uh, you oh, always doing that, you'll, you'll find more fish. So you will rather than just fish in the one area, you've got to. Much like fat salmon fishing, it's the same. I mean, if I was just fishing for trout the day or I went away up the river uh, because I'm salmon fishing, uh, the salmon rod I stayed down the bottom end here. I had it on for a second ago. I took the point and fly that fish. That was a, I felt it. I never saw the take, I felt it. So the fish won that one. I'm going to go down a wee bit here with the wets just to see. Oh, there we go. Gosh. Well, that hooked itself. That was no, that was just pure dumb luck, as they say in Scotland. He's just took the march brown. Must have chased it around. Not a big fish, but it's a, it's, any fish is good. There you go, there he is. He certainly wanted a wanted to fight. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see. There we go. In the top. Just untangle this a wee bit. Yeah, we'll have a wee brownie. I was actually just about to lift off there when that fish took. So, must have followed it out. They do chase your fly, there's a wind picking up. And the changing conditions, so it was meant to get windy today. I did notice that in the weather. Changing conditions maybe make a difference. Good or bad anyway. Usually a sign there's a low coming in. And uh, we could bring the fish this. If there's a salmon around, it's usually a good. That's what I like to see. Oh, there we go. This is a wee one. Wee one. Put the drop up. Oh, stay still. Nice wee brown trout. Just get it out. He's gonna swallow it a wee bit. There we go. Anyway, just gonna try and concentrate a wee bit in the far side here. It's it's a good area. I mean, the middle's good as well. It's a. Uh, A 
good fishy looking area. Who's this? I still haven't seen a fish rise. Or even a salmon show. Uh, usually if there is a salmon in the pool there's a chance it will jump. But very quiet. Good bit this here for trout. Just under this tree here, it can just hang the flies a wee bit over there. Okay, we quick cast the floor. Maybe I think I'll get up, go up and fish maybe the top pool before we go home. Uh, but it's always good to give this another cast. We'll fish the salmon, but the, so the only take I had was that earlier on. I need to look at the footage just to see exactly what it looked like. Um, but that was my chance, as far as I believe. And uh, I missed it, so... Still got the same two wee wet, so I've got the caddis and the woodcock and hare's ear and the point. I've had fish in both, so... They're worth Obviously casting again. Most time I put a heavier nymph in the tip just to see if it slow up a wee bit. But I'll just leave it. The, the bottom there. Fishing quite short here so that if I do get a take I can basically tighten up quite quick. And plus I can see better if it's... I just want to fish this far side because that is a good area. Cast not stream just allows the flies to drift more natural light but... And then we'll get down a wee bit further as well. As I say, you've got to be quick. Just, oh, was he quick enough there? That was a take. I took the the caddis and the dropper. Missed that one. Gee. Anyway. I'd love to go up and fish the other pools at the top, the, but we need to head home, or maybe, we'll see, there's a good pool further up, the, the garden pool, uh, there's some really good trout, I mean if there's some nice trout out there, 
It's not that far away, I'll maybe give it a cast, I'll see. I certainly wore this one out, I'll push this through. Here's the rain starting. Just one of these days, folks. I mean, I like the rain at times. But what we'll do is we'll go, I think, just finish off. Heavy drops that. Okay, we'll head up. A wee quick cast before we head back to the car, I think. I think that'll be it if this rain starts like this. So, anyways, but for the one or two trout, not. I mean, some one nice, really nice fish, and uh, two shellers. We had that on, but I need to look at the the footage just to see what the take was like. I did see the fish come up uh, as a pool to fly. We'll see. But it, it did look like a salmon to me. I was convinced it was anyway. But anyway, we had a chance, and it's gone. That's what happens when fishing. So we're going to head up, there's some water up the top, and maybe get a cast before we finish. Come in here, I'm going to basically, it's not deep water down here, but I've only fished at an odd time. And I've had one or two fish in it, like, so I'm going to put my, just in this run here, where the trout flies, so put my, Salmon rod there, and just I fish this far, run over here, and then work my way down. First thing I've got to do is fish the front of me. So, just in here. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, we, we missed that one. You see, there is one or two wee trout in these runs. It's the matter of fish them. That was a good straight away. So we'll work our way across. Fishing behind these stones or ideal areas. The small fish are fish to lie. Lost them. Another wee brownie there. Just for a grab at the fly. Could be spot just over there. As I say, we'll just don her down and push in between the rocks and we runs.
in here as well. Main run is down here, it would be quite good. out here. Just drag out the road of this boulder so I can maybe take this fish. Jeez. That's not a bad trout actually. It's bigger than I thought. There we go. This is worth fishing these wee runs. Good. Just right at the very tail end of that run there, that was. Oops. This run on the far side looks quite good. Just the far over there, just it's quite fast, but there'll be fish lying in it. There's a few branches I can see below the surface. Oh. Guess what? The branch I saw below the surface I've actually hooked. Here it's there. So Take that off. <coughs> Put the branch away. Go back out. Hopefully, there's no more branches. Just the far side there. Well, there's, I'll we'll make up, I'll we'll fish the, there's a runner when the fish is always there before I finish off. It was worth stopping there and having a cast. I could fish further down, but uh, I want to get up, finish off. Well, let's just get head up home. So, I'll get back up and get the rods, the rod anyway. There's a wee, basically there's a wee pool I like to fish before I head up to the car, so I'm going to give it a go and get my line to come through. Yeah, I'm going to try this wee run here first and uh, I've had one or two nice trout out here in the past, so it's always worth a wee cast before you head home. The type of place you'd find a nice fish. It's not deep, but it's plenty of food in it if there's fish. Or the flies hatching anyway. Just 
slowly work my way out. I never touched a wee fish there. It's, uh, it's a good wee bit. Normally, it always holds a, an odd fish, but. It's been one of these days, it's not been. not been great. I've had some nice fish, I mean. Pheasant behind us. You see a, a pool with the salmon earlier, my first chance was. I need to look at the footage just to see what it's like. I was convinced it was a fish, like, oh, a wee tarp there with a fish. Uh, I was certainly convinced it was a fish. I have even seen the the swirl, I'll see it in the camera, I would think. It was my... I pulled the fly away from it, so that was the... If I just left it for a split second more, the chances are it would have hooked itself. That happens, times you just go to pull away and you just do the wrong thing. You never know. Let's push the back of this stone here. Push a wee bit further over there. The stone there, just push over the back of this one. Nope. That was a good lot. We got a couple of takes, a couple of fish down the bottom there. I think we had three fish take. Uh, one nice wee fish. So, anyway, here we are, folks. That'll do us for today. It's another Friday on the dune, as they say. Changes from week to week. So, I say it's been a couple of weeks since I was here. Last week my car, the clutch went. Uh, it wasn't actually the clutch, it was the master cylinder for the the back of the pedal, which is basically controls the pressure, the hydraulic brakes, I oh, sorry, clutch. And uh, it gave up. And I managed to limp to about two miles from the from home, before I couldn't get any more, I couldn't get into gear, so I had to phone for a pickup. But anyway, that's what happens when you have a car. So there we are, folks. That's us for the day. It's been quite good. I enjoyed the day. So can't complain. And uh, we'll be here next week. Uh, I've got a chance if I get a chance to get up the loch. I'll well, certainly up to Loch Dune. Or even further up to the there's a loch I want to fish is Loch Finless, which is above Loch Dune. It's wild brown trout. It's a wee walk up the hill which I'd enjoy anyway. So if I get a chance to that I'll go up. The conditions are ideal. The loch would have been good today. But anyway, there we are. That's for another couple of hours on the river. It's get a bit rougher now. So and then we've got the dreaded it's not a big hill but it's you know, <laughs> it's a hill enough. Grab the road. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. And as I say, get out there, fish away, 
the first chance you get, even if it's just for a couple of hours, it's amazing what you can do in a couple of hours. So again, thanks for watching. Until next time.